Uh, hello, everyone. So um, I'm going to try to be fast. First, because I have put too much slides from for the slot time slot that I have, and second, because we are uh, maybe 30 minutes late. So I will try to 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 be fast and to pass some slides that I have here, and you probably already heard something about it today. Um, so I will start with a brief context, then I will go uh, to the bone, uh, to the decision support tools that we have been uh, trying to develop, and and uh, then the follow up and final remarks. So, um, well, you are, you have already seen something like this. Uh, you can see the importance and the relevance of the Atlantic coast in terms of maritime traffic. Um, n now we have. Um, in, we are in the super tanker era uh, where, where we have uh, ships with bigger than the Empire State Building um, and, and that's going to, to, be, to increase even more. So this is something that we have to live with. Um, in terms of detection of, of spills by AMSA, Clean CNET, this is just a, a picture from last year. Um, some of the, the spills that were possibly detected uh, from, from them in the, in, in the coast. You can see the Atlantic uh, is, is marked as well. Uh, not so much as the Atlantic or the Baltic, uh, as the, the Baltic or the Mediterranean, but uh, we also have uh, some, some pollution problems here. <coughs> then not, all, not only oil spills, there are also chemical spills, accidents uh, with, with uh, hazardous and noxious substances, the HNS uh, transported at sea, and this, these are just two uh, examples of it. Um, last year we also had a, an oil spill in Gran Canaria uh, with Oleg Naidanov, uh, and just a few uh, months ago uh, there was no spill in, in Lisbon, uh, but there was uh, uh, a huge uh, concern about uh, uh, a tanker that was uh, drifted aground uh, in, in, in Cascais. Uh, so this was a, a main uh, issue. Uh, you know, all over the news, you, you, uh, there, there was news about, about this problem. But there was no spill. For <coughs> Luckily, there was no spill. Um, and then, in the next year, um, we are now facing a, also a new era about oil drilling and the possibility of exploring uh, oil and gas in the Portuguese uh, southern coast. Uh, so uh, this is uh, a bit this is a concern that we have to, to face with right now. Um, we don't know if this is really going to happen, but it's planned to happen uh, in the future in the future time period. Um, so we we want to avoid uh, this kind of accidents like what we had in in Gulf of Mexico. Um, and we, you have already seen this, uh, the Portuguese coast uh, is immense, is, is huge. Uh, the, the, not the Portuguese coast, but the, the exclusive economic zone, and we cannot um, face all the problems that we have to monitor the, 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 the area without the help and the coordination and collaboration with the neighborhood countries. Um, that's why we have a, a, an agreement, which is the Lisbon Agreement, um, which is in, at the same level as the Barcelona Convention for the Mediterranean Sea and the Bonn Agreement for the North, uh, for the North Sea. Uh, and this started last year. Um, and there are five uh, contracting parties, the European Union, Portugal, Spain, France and Morocco. And so um, the main goal is to promote a mechanism to ensure a cooperation between the, the contracting parties in the case of pollution accidents not only with oil, but also with chemicals. And so, um, this is the context. Uh, our approach facing this problem is to try to develop, to test, uh, and to support the implementation of new and versatile uh, tools supported uh, and using uh, numerical models uh, in order to improve preparedness, prevention, planning activities in regarding uh, pollution at sea for oil and chemical spills. So, um, in the last in the last times in the last year, uh, one or two years uh, and months as well, uh, we have been connected with with some new decision support systems. Um, some of them connected with Arcopol, but not only Arcopol. There, there were also Isdump project, um, and we have also a cooperation agreement with EMSA. Um, and so there there are. It, there are three uh, main uh, players and three factors that, that are involved in all these uh, decision support systems. MOID, 
it has been used uh, for oil and chemical spill modeling and also for hydrodynamic model in local uh, conditions and regional conditions. Copernicus, uh, Copernicus is very important for us for the open boundary conditions, um, but can also be used as direct forcing of spill models. Uh, and Moid Studio has been also developed and is a, is a graphic user interface and uh, the action server, is, which is also part of Moid Studio, um, is a, an operational system also used as a back office server for all the operational uh, services. So I'm going to pass this like the, the open boundary conditions from SMEMS in, MEMS in, the, in our modeling stru structure. Um, then in terms of, of Moid Studio, the, the main, uh, the main uh, strategy here was to, since it is the graphic user interface from, from Moid, we, we try, try to, to, to have a system where we can put several different data layers uh, from different uh, data providers. Um, but we also wanted to provide uh, outputs to, to different platforms, including Google Earth, uh, Shapefiles, uh, the, for instance, Arcopole Viewer from Intecmar, uh, which is fully OGC compliant, and also the EMSA uh, CleanCNET user interface, which is also OGC compliant. So um, one of the tools and one of the plugins that, is, uh, that has been developed in the last year uh, inside Moid Studio is the Moid Lagrange uh, Wizard, uh, which is just um, a, a small, small simulator. Um, but this one has the particularity that is not only for oil spills, it's also for chemical spills and for small floating objects. Um, it, and the main idea here is to make a, a connection with the NOAA online database. Um, although we have several different products that we can choose from oil and chemical spills. Um, we can use it for surface, for subsurface, deep water blowouts. Um, we can start an oil spill from a satellite detected image. Uh, and then we can use uh, uh, operational models, Metocean uh, forecasting systems, not only from, from CMEMS, but also from our uh, in-house models and, and other operational systems that are available. So I'm not going well. We, then we can see results here in time series. We can also see graphics, uh, pro vertical profiles that we can see vertical cuts. Um, well, this is one other plugin that we have developed is the dynamic risk tool. Um, I'm, I'll, I'm also not going to, to lose too much time on this, but this is just a, an idea and a, a new methodology to, ex to estimate the, the risk uh, in the Portuguese. In this case, the, the, it was applied in the Portuguese and Galicia coast. Uh, the idea is to provide the shoreline contamination risk based on the evolution of the met ocean conditions and the ship traffic uh, in real time. So this can be used in real time as a monitoring tool but can also be used in planning and prevention, trying to identify hot spots and, and areas with more risk than others. Uh, so uh, we can also isolate uh, some specific places and try to find out what, what are the main vessels that are uh, contributing to the risk on that area, and vice versa. We can pick up a vessel and find out the, the main uh, shoreline areas that are, uh, that are affected by this, by this group by this vessel. Um, other, other thing that was developed in, in, in the ISDAM project, it was, it was the, the coupling of MOID with a, a BOOM model, and so this was also implemented in, in MOID Studio. So the main idea is to, to have dynamic changing of the, the, the oil boom, and the, how this can affect the efficiency uh, and the retention of the oil uh, using the oil spill model. At the end, we, as, as I told you, we want to provide all these, uh, these products, not only in Moid Studio, but for third-party platforms. Uh, so we can provide this as a, as a website. You can see results in websites using WMS. So if you develop a, a website um, that uses the WMS layers, you can, you can load this in your system. Um, so we can... We can also, since the website is web responsive, we can also see this on smartphones very easily. So if you put this address, you can see in real time this information uh, in your smartphone. 
Um, we can also provide this in real time for Google Earth um, using the same, the same strategy. Um, so um, this is the kind of, of things that we, we have been developing. Now, um, at the last weeks uh, and the last months, we have been developing a new service, uh, which is the Moid Clean CNET service. It's, it's something that we are still developing. Um, and, and this is in, in the cooperation agreement um, that we have with EMSA. So the main idea here is to have an automatic service provi for providing uh, oil spill forecasts once an oil spill is detected without any human intervention. And so this is just, this is just an email, an example of an alert uh, from an oil spill. Um, so yeah, it's, it's ugly, I know, but uh, you have well, a lot of information here that can be very valuable to, to you because you can, you can see the spill center in Google Maps if you click on that. You can also go directly to the, M, to the Clean CNET package with a lot of files that can be um, uploaded to the, um, to the Clean CNET user interface directly. But if you prefer to, to open this kind of spill in Google Earth, you can, you can choose, um, you can see the, the information in Google Earth and you will be able to see in green the forecast and at yellow the backtracking uh, of the oil spill. It is very weird, very awkward, because it, there are different patterns here. But, um, so you can use Google Earth to, to, to provide you an animation uh, that was automatically generated by the, by the service based on the detection from the EMSA Clean CNET service. So this is the kind of, uh, of system that we are trying to develop. Um, and that we are uh, delivering to the Portuguese Maritime Authority because the, for, for them, uh, well, uh, they, they will be able to just with an email just to find out, uh, try to find out the pollution source and what's the, the, the forecast of the, of, the, of the detection. Then they will also be able to open some files, open some files in, in Moid Studio so they will be able to, to, to open the, the information that we are providing in time series uh, in Moid Studio, for instance. So this service, this is a, a first guess approach that we are trying to develop. This is not uh, a replacement of the existing operational systems that uh, the different member states have. So in fact, EMSA is doing this with other partners uh, in the European region, just uh, two more minutes. Um, and so we don't want to replace uh, the, the operational systems that, that, that are already available. The, the idea is to provide a first, a first uh, modeling, uh, a first forecast, a first approach once uh, the, the spill is detected. So this provides a, a, a forecast in, in five minutes. So this is a very fast uh, response. And, and the Metocean model data that we use is previously downloaded in background. Presently, we are using this at the Portuguese coast um, only for the continental area, um, but is fully ready to use CMEM's solutions. Um, for instance, a Mercator global solution, which, which means that we can apply this uh, worldwide. Um, and it, in fact, it can use other uh, operational models, not only the ones that we have here at uh, IST or the ones that we have uh, at CMEMS, but it can be adapted to use any other uh, Metocean modeling system. So um, this is right now being tested uh, with the Portuguese Maritime Authority. Uh, at the beginning of next year, it will be fully operational. The tests with them uh, uh, are continuing and we will have next month uh, a live test with them and also with our beans, uh, which are developing a, a, per a parallel service for the North Sea. Uh, and the system will be extended to other areas in Portugal, like Madeira Islands, uh, in the scope of, of Marpox project. Um, initially, using MEMS, and at the end of the project, using the, the new models that we are that we want to develop. Depending on SASMAR and on Spain, Spanish authorities, this can be also implemented uh, in Canary Islands and Morocco, um, taking advantage of Marpox project. So all these kind of projects um, we expect to transfer uh, in the scope of, 
of, of different uh, research projects like Marpox, like Plus Atlantic that Ramiro has mentioned. Um, more documentation, training and user engagement will be um, mainly focused on HNS modeling systems in the scope of Mariner, Mariner project, which is coordinated by SETMAR. Um, and, and in fact, well, most of you have already heard a lot about Arcopol, uh, the project finished, but y y sorry, you're not going to, to, to end up with Arcopol, you're going to keep listening about Arcopol because a think tank was, was created and it will be perpetuated a platform in the Arcopol, uh, an international platform. So this kind of uh, discussions around oil spills will continue in time in the, in the future. Um, and just to finish, uh, in terms of, uh, as I told you, the Lisbon Agreement that, that we have here uh, with all these countries, uh, we have taken the opportunity of this region, uh, of, this, uh, of, of, this, of this agreement, to build a, a new project, an international project that is coordinated by us in IST, which is MARPOX, um, with different partners um, from, from IST, Action Modelers, uh, Madeira Ocean Observatory, from Spain we have Plocan, uh, Universidad de las Palmas, and we have also CEDRA and INRH, which I know they are here represented as well. And so uh, in red you see the area of application of the, of the project. Then we have also the, the incorporation of authorities uh, and stakeholders that you can see here. Um, just to, we have authorities from national uh, institutions and local like ports, but it's very interesting that we also have the African Maritime Safety and Security Agency, so they will be uh, taking, paying, uh, having attention to the developments and try to, to find how this can be exploited to, to be used in other African areas. Uh, African regions. T to finish, last slide. Um, so these kind of proposed decision support systems are uh, effectively contributing to, to improve prevention and preparedness um, on, the, on oil and chemical spill management in the Atlantic region, um, particularly in the, in the area where, where we are in the Lisbon Agreement zone. Um, and we feel from the, the feedback from the users we feel that local and regional <coughs> models uh, with better, which have better representation of freshwater discharges, of estuarine and coastal processes, they are preferred uh, when comparing to, to impose solutions that come from uh, global models or, um, or, or, or other systems that don't take advantage of the, of the, of the coastal areas. But in fact, the CMEMS models, they, can be, they are essential to the open boundary conditions and they are also very important. They can also um, cover gaps that we have between models, or be, they can also be used as a backup plan. If you have your local model uh, not working right now, you can always uh, rely on, on CMEMS uh, because it's already working. And, and so that's it. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you very much. It is good to hear about a system that do not depend on the working hours or the weekends, so it is automatic. So. <laughs>